been even a slave. Is that possible? You okay with that word? Okay. The Bible does say you are not your own. You're bought with a price. And Luke 17, I want to begin with the story of the ten lepers, beginning in verse 11. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Did you catch what happened there? What happened there? Right. The master, Jesus, told them, go and show yourself to the priests. Right? But they weren't cleansed. And the Bible says what? The next verse says, as they went on their way, they were cleansed. Hmm. So their faith, right, cleansed them. They obeyed, didn't they? Okay. They believed. And one of them, verse 15, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet. Hmm. Glorified God and fell down at his feet. Whose feet? Jesus' feet. Okay. Giving him thanks, he was a what? Is that a Jew? No. Hmm. And Jesus answering said, Where there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger, Jesus says. And he said unto, them, unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. So, were the Jews not supposed to be the servants? The disciples of the Lord, of God? Or are they the followers? But yet you have these ten lepers, right? And nine of them were supposed to be Jews, followers, right? But the one, he's a Gentile, right? And he comes back to praise the Lord for the blessing that he got. He's no longer a leper. I mean, I don't know. I mean, if you lived as a leper, that's a pretty bad deal. You know, you know your fingers can fall off and or something, you know. It's a pretty wicked thing. You think you might be happy that you were cleansed? So who do you think went on the rest of their life as a servant of the Lord? The one that the Jews didn't think even had a reason to call on the name of the Lord, right? Because they were dogs. Right. It's a crazy picture, isn't it? You know, we can't, as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can't be casting stones and judging. We have to, we don't, we don't know who's the Lord. I had this fellow come up to me and dropped my truck off this week up to Caterpillar. And, um, <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about Florida. <laughs> Been there all week. Shouldn't be that long. Anyways, I didn't even need to go there. Um, this gentleman comes up to me. And I can't remember his name. But he had eight gold teeth. Four on top, four on top. We'll call him gold tooth. <laughs> he started talking to me, and I'm telling you, Every other word was the F bomb. Bing, bang, boom, 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 boom. And he did not. I was trying to get a word in 
you know? But he was a talker. That guy's a talker. And finally I was able to slip a few words in there. And I was able to change the tone of the conversation. And all of a sudden, the F-bomb disappeared. And now pretty soon we're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're talking about the end of the world and the way things are. The fact that we need to get right. You know? So I'm praying and all this guy's talking. Now he's, he's, now he's preaching to me. I'm like, I'm going to go. I'm listening. Well, I'm sitting up in my truck and he's standing down there talking to me. And I got all these books on my dash. And while he's talking, I'm thinking, Lord, which book do I need to give this man? I don't know which one. And uh, I ended up giving him one of the end of time books we gave away. I just happened to have one left in my truck. You know which one I'm talking about? The little brown book. Yeah, that's a good one. Anyways, gave it to him. We parted ways. He was so excited to receive that book. He said that he would read it. He was really excited about it. You know, and, uh, it's just wonderful. Wonderful. You know, to see that kind of change happened. And, and, you know, if I was quick to judge and be a pharisaical person, you know, I don't talk like that. So I'm just going to turn my back and walk away from this fellow. I'd have never got it to that point, would I? You know? We had communion last week. And we do foot washing. Right? And why do we do foot washing? Humility. Yeah, because when we live in this world, you know, the Lord says we're, we've been baptized and we're clean. But if you live in this world, brothers and sisters, your feet are going to get dirty. They're going to get dirty. You can't help it. You walk around on this planet, you're going to get dirty. But should that discourage us? No, that should encourage us. Look, at, if you can follow the Lord Jesus Christ in this world, on this planet, as ugly and as filthy and as vile as some of the people are, Okay, the things that they do to their brothers and sisters and the things that they do to animals is just unconscionable. But if we can serve God here and now, how's it going to be in heaven? Beautiful. Are you kidding me? What does God want to see? Where's the contrast? What are the people looking? What are the other worlds looking at? What do they want to understand? Do you have something to show? Do you have something to tell? You know, we're going to we're going to be preachers in heaven. We're going to be teachers in heaven. We're going to show the other worlds this horrible sin experiment and how God loves. You know? That we can understand God in a way that they could never understand. You see, you can, they can look at a picture. They see this picture. But don't you see, we are that picture. We're like the movie. You follow me? You are the movie. We have a job to do. we got to wake up our brothers and sisters. You know, if we're focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, He's going to lead us. He's going to show us how to do these things. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Don't you want to see your neighbors in heaven? Don't you want to see your brothers and sisters? Let's turn our, Well, let's turn to... Let's keep on going here in verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto his disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall say to you, See here, or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. For as lightning that lighteth out of the one part of heaven shineth unto the other part of heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, and they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, drink, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, 
It rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. And thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. You know, is it any different? Is there anything new under the sun? What happened? Why was Sodom and Gomorrah judged? Because of the wickedness that's going on here today. Right? It's the same thing. You know, it's gotten to the point where people call evil good and good evil. And you're praised if you do it wrong. Praised from the housetops if you do it wrong. You know, it's funny because you have this series that's went through and they've made a lot of money on it. The books and movies left behind. The whole left behind series. They got it all wrong. Don't they? Think about it. When the floods came, right? The ones that were left behind were saved in the ark. Right? The others were done away with, weren't they? It's funny how the devil can twist things. Make people so they can't see the truth. And then you have to teach people, you have to unteach what they know so that you can teach them the truth. I had a dear sweet lady come to, well I went to see her yesterday. And um, I visited with her. And she said, that the Lord, she, she said, I don't know who told me this, she says, but I heard a voice from behind me when I got out of the hospital that said that I need to stop eating meat. Just like that. That I needed to stop eating meat. And she says to me, she says, what do you think about it? I says, it sounds biblical. I says, the Bible says you'll hear a voice from behind you telling you this is the way, walk ye in it. If that's the way the Lord's leading you, amen, sister, go. And she was real happy about that. Think the Lord still speaks to people today? Yes. You think the people still hear that voice from behind him? Yes. Have you ever heard him speak to you in that way? I've heard a voice. I, I, I mean, I'm telling you, I've heard, like I swore it was somebody standing there next to me. There wasn't anybody there, but I heard the voice. I certainly did. Anyways, I want to keep on reading here. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back, remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you in the night that there shall be two men in one bed, the one shall be taken, the other shall be left. Two, men shall be grind two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Where the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. We need to listen. We need to study our Bibles. We need to know and show ourselves approved, don't we? How, how quick are we to just... Well, they believe this, so we just throw it away. I, I delivered this week, Monday, down in... Um, where was it? West Park. I was in West Park. And it's, I delivered to a, a big Jehovah Witness facility, bringing in a new air conditioner down there. Um, and the gentleman that I met there, um, he was the one that was going to be putting in the air conditioner. He was sitting there waiting. I was supposed to be there at 9 o'clock to meet the crane. I pulled in at 20 of, and, uh, the gates are locked. You know, there's like a compound. You can't, you can't get in there. Anyways, I was able to just back my truck in and keep it crooked just a little bit, just enough where I had like this much of my truck sticking out in the road, and that's the best I could do. So, anyways, 
I'm sitting there talking to this gentleman and come to find out that he is he's also a Jehovah's Witness. And he that wasn't his kingdom hall. He said, I love that name. What's that nice name? It's a nice name for Kingdom Hall. And they're Jehovah's Witnesses. We are Jehovah's Witnesses, aren't we? I mean, come on, let's face it. God's name is Jehovah. So we were sitting there talking and I told him I'm an Adventist. So you know what we talked about? We talked about things that we agree upon. And we had a real nice conversation. And there are quite a few things that we agree upon. You know, we have some common ground with Jehovah's Witnesses. We didn't beat each other up with the things that uh, we don't agree with, you know. We talked about the things that we agreed with. And he told me that he met his wife in school. She was 14 years old. He was 16. And when he turned 18, he graduated school. He says, I'm marrying you. His, his wife came out of school 16. She quit school. I don't know if he can still do that or not. But anyway, she quit school. They got married, had a family. Still married. I think he said 50-something years or something. You know, today, if somebody did that, what would the world, the world would freak out with me? You know, think about it. They probably said it wouldn't work to them back then, too. But that's a, that's a, that's a success story, isn't it? I mean, how many people stay married that long, especially when they got married that young? People, you know, like a young girl quits school at 16, they thought, she's a fool. What is she doing with him? Well, they've had a good life. Anyways, my point is, if we're really going to be truly servants of God, we can't be so quick to judge one another. We've got to find common ground. Like that fellow that came up to me and he's going on and on and on. Yeah, I could have been Mr. Holier than thou, right? I could have done a lot of things. But you know what? I sucked it up. This guy lives in the world. He's worldly. Hello? What do you expect him to be? You know, if he's a Muslim, he's probably carrying a carpet in his back pocket or something so he can kneel down and kneel or, and pray. I, I don't know. You know? People do what people do. That's who they are. We have to meet the people on their grounds. This is the only way we're going to win this thing and get God's people to be come home. Right? We have to share the truth. Sometimes we have to break down through barriers to get through to that. But Jesus did it in love. We can do it in love. If we pray to the Lord that we would be a blessing, and that he would make us a blessing, you know, we won't see people the same. We won't. And they won't see us the same, you see, because there was something about Jesus that drew those people to him, you know. They didn't feel like they had to run away from him, even though they were living lives in the wrong way. Do you understand why that is? Why is that? Because they wanted what God had. They wanted what Jesus had. They wanted that peace. They wanted that love. They sought it from him. Brothers and sisters, we all have that too, if you have Jesus Christ. He wants to reach out and touch people. He wants to love people. He wants to save people. You know, let's us stop <coughs> judging people, okay? And let's love one another, you know? If somebody's a homosexual and that's their lifestyle, that's what they've chosen to be. Now, you could be their friend. <coughs> and maybe, maybe, just maybe, by you being their friend, they may see Jesus in you and come out of that lifestyle. Amen. You can't tell me that, that people are born. I, I don't believe it's garbage. People are born homosexual or whatever. That's ridiculous. I don't believe that. That's <coughs> God doesn't make trash. The devil will fill your mind full of junk, okay? There's women that I've seen that are very masculine, okay? And there's women that I've seen that are very feminine along that whole spectrum. And the same thing with men. I've seen men that are real macho, and I've seen men that are kind of feminine. Does that mean that they're supposed to be a homosexual or a lesbian or whatever? No, not at all. But if, if a person's prone in that direction, 
and the devil is working on them, hello, if they don't get any truth, if they don't get any backing, they don't get any help, if they're not able to talk out their feelings, guess what happens? They walk down that road. The devil is winning, brothers and sisters. It seems like he's winning. This morning, when I was, I had my, my talk with the Lord Jesus. And it was time for me to jump in the hot tub, sit down, and just relax. Listen to the birds and just see nature. Watch the sun come. You know what? I'm sitting there. And I'll kick back in my nice hot tub. It's beautiful. I got my cup of herbal tea there. And there's this little rascal of a mosquito. <laughs> and he's outside that screen enclosure. And I'm like right next to the screen enclosure in my hot tub. And he, that little rascal, I'm watching him, he can smell my blood. <laughs> and he keeps hitting that screen. And he's putting his little stinger right through that screen. I'm sure he was. I can't see that well. <laughs> but he kept hitting the darn thing. And I know he was wanting me. And the whole time I'm sitting there, he just keeps hitting it and keeps hitting it and keeps hitting it. And I thought, though, there's the devil right there. There is the exact epitome of evil, right? He is constant and never quits. That mosquito will give his life, give his life trying to take mine. You see that? That's the way evil is in the world. It never, ever gives up never gives up. We've had 200 plus years of wonderful country and they're just destroying this thing. They're tearing it apart. And it breaks my heart that we should call good evil and evil good. But all it takes for evil to succeed is good men to do nothing. And we just sit silently as the whole thing falls apart. I just don't understand. It doesn't make any sense to me. But, anyways, the devil will eventually find a weakness and a scream, a cut, a tear. And as soon as he can get in, he'll invite thousands more to come in and attack. And when I was working in the front yard the day before, I was so busy doing other things, I didn't get to what I really wanted to do was out in the front, fixing the, the bushes and everything. Well, the sun was going down, and I'm out there working, and it's just starting to get dark. And you know them, I don't know what you guys call them, no seams, punkies, whatever, boy, they tore me up. But I couldn't stop. Here I am, the sun's going down, Thursday night, and I'm, was it, yeah, it had to be Thursday, maybe it was, maybe it was Wednesday, I don't know. Anyways, I was tore up. And I couldn't stop. Because I'm trying to cut, get everything done, get it all put away. I want to do it once, not twice. And, and I'm in shorts, just shorts. I had eight up. Eight up from head to toe. And things are terrible. Anyways, turn your Bibles to Luke 22. Luke 22. Again in uh, verse 24, <coughs> 22, 24. And there was also strife among men, which of them should be accounted the greatest. <clears throat> Here we go again. And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he that is chief, as he that doth serve. For whether is the greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth? Is it not he that sitteth at 